So we're in Fort Worth, Texas right now. We're attending the uh, INCOR conference, the National Conference on Race and Ethnicity. Tomorrow we are having two screenings. They're going to, it's kind of be a public debut, I guess, of the, the closest thing to the, you know, the, the final thing that we have that we're going to be showing. So first session is designed for basically a panel. So me and Ken will answer questions and talk about it. And the second session at 8 o'clock is going to be actually open for everybody in the community. There's a lot of urban natives in this area. We've been advertising a lot, hoping to get uh, some people. We're having a local drum group come up and do a, you know, a couple opening songs and opening prayer. And uh, it's just a really great opportunity for, for Encore. I'm very thankful that they, were, they opened it up to the, to the public like that because not a lot of conferences would do that. around Indians, and all of a sudden, they create meaning for themselves and they create an identity. We released our first trailer, you know, it got like 600 views in like a year. <laughs> and so I, I've kind of always thought the only people that are going to watch it are going to be native people. And so this is like, it's really amazing that this many people at one time are going to watch it. Well, I don't, I don't think we ever envisioned it'd be even remotely close to this. We figured we'd post it on YouTube and maybe a couple hundred people would see it, but we never even anticipated this. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. Pretty nerve-wracking all at the same time, I think. I, I'm hoping for a full room. Uh, we have about 200 seats, and so it'd be great if we could get a lot of the community out. Um, and a lot of people, I'm really hoping there's going to be a lot of non-native people there that come support this, because I think if we can get other people of color on this issue, I think this wouldn't be an issue. So let me introduce, please, uh, the filmmakers Ken Little and John Little. Uh, they're Standing Rock Sioux folks. Uh, they come to us originally by way of, of Denver, Colorado. Thank you for coming. Many of you in the room have probably heard the, uh, the, the sort of uh, common retort when people bring up the issue of the Redskins mascot. They say, aren't there more important things for you to be worrying about? What about poverty? What about economics? What about all these other sorts of things? But here's the thing to bear in mind too. Representation is not a minor issue. Representation is a fundamental and integral issue. Importantly too, I think as you watch the film, keep an eye on it throughout. It's got an arc of its own. It's got a movement of its own. And in its final act, it winds up, for my money, in one of the most important places we could find. And that's to say, what's next for indigenous people? What would happen if they took control over their own representations? I remind us all, too, though, that the film itself is that very thing. It is an articulation of a artistic and a political and a culturally relevant project from an indigenous perspective. And that's why it's so important, I think, that we bring films like this to audiences like you. Every time we touch down on whatever we do something good, it's held to the Redskins and, and, the, and the sons of Washington. Having the voices of the community be centered and um, showcased, it starts to break down those misconceptions about why we're fighting for these issues. And it starts to show that these are things that really are deeply pro problematic and have deep roots in our communities and that Native people are kind of leading the charge on, um, on removing these harmful images. And I think if Snyder and his family, also not just him, the other owners, and also, even the African Americans or, or all the football players should have an issue with this. They should say, hey, we love this game. We want to play it, but we don't want to play it in a way that's going to be derogatory to any people in our country. There's some interesting Native American history with even the game of football that is to be celebrated. But we can't celebrate that if we keep offering these derogatory images. It's a conversation that doesn't really happen, um, and it and it needs to be. So it was. I, I mean, I cried. I everything. Yeah. I. It was. It was. Uh, it was a powerful, powerful film. It's been a really positive experience, and then we each come from different backgrounds. As far as you know, I'm the graphic designer, film, and whatnot, and he's more of the historian. It's kind of been a bonding experience, you know, we've been able to spend the last couple of years, you know, working on this a lot together. I think we were all super impressed, uh, and not only impressed, I think it uh, brought to attention many uh, 
salient points that perhaps aren't part of the discussion on mascots and racism and uh, made me proud to see that it's finally been addressed in a respectful manner and at the same time uh, is uh, deliverable to the young people uh, in our community so they also can understand. It provides community organizers and people interested in pursuing the topic uh, with a tool to use. It reminded me of a study that Stephanie Freiberg had done and that just like blew my mind because you know to show native or racist native imagery uh, in pop culture even like Disney movies and things like that to native youth and their self-esteem goes down like we can understand that but then for white students being shown those native imagery their self-esteem went up and so it just like opens up this whole idea of like oh this is definitely about power um, and so it begs the question then what how do we fix it right and the voices and the, the stories are not new but the audience you know, maybe the newer generation hasn't heard it in this way. And so I really appreciate when, you know, students and, and young filmmakers pick up these stories. So it's, it's, like, it's like the baton has been passed off to the next generation. So now it's their turn to tell it in their way. For me, there was a piece of my own story in the film, um, and I really appreciated that. And um, it just, it's absolutely a story that needs to be told. It was emotional. I thought the film was very emotional, especially coming from uh, a Native perspective, such as myself. I was raised on the reservation, lived on the reservation, and so I can relate to a lot of what the people in the video were saying. I'm really glad that we have some indigenous filmographers finally speaking for us, um, finally getting that idea out. Um, I mean, there's no better way to explain an indigenous issue from indigenous people. And we feel like, as indigenous people, I mean, this whole system depends on our erasure. As long as we are erased as indigenous people, colonization is validated. I think that uh, Native um, students definitely um, and Native communities um, uh, need to uh, be able to express um, this contemporary form of art um, to also remind people that um, you know, we're here in the present, we're continuing, uh, you know, our language continues in various different forms and ways, our stories continue in various different forms and ways, uh, and um, by addressing the issue of the mascot, it actually was more than that. You know, whenever they, they, they make a, a film that has a native in it, they'll put someone like Johnny Depp in it, or, or you're, it's told through Kevin Costner, and so, uh, a lot of times natives are secondary characters, so a lot of times we don't see natives, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to find native role models. And so I think it's been really interesting, like, the, you know, the last maybe six months and even like this at this conference at Encore, uh, I've had people come up to me, you know, younger kids and, you know, want to talk and like, I mean, I think that inspires me to just keep doing what I'm doing because it means that we're probably doing, a, you know, good stuff. And so hopefully uh, we can continue to inspire other generations to, to make their films and, you know, tell their stories and do things like that. I would really like uh, young, young Indigenous people out there to, to look and say, like, oh, those guys in one year um, and basically made a film. And, and they didn't really, you know, they didn't know anybody in Hollywood. They didn't have anybody really, but we had a lot of like mentors and a lot of people that helped us out, but we really didn't have anybody in film that was like gonna give us the opportunity to do it and we just did it.